sensitivity pain fast with Sensodyne Rapid Action for clinically proven relief in 60 seconds. Finding the truth in these uncertain times has become certain. Possibilities for business even more convenient with the Nation e-paper. To enjoy this and more, simply dial star 550 star 1 hash for daily nation and star 550 star 5 hash for business daily on your mobile phone and get 50% discount on the e-paper. Yes, for just 20 shillings each, the truth will find you and more possibilities right where you are. Dial star 550 star 1 hash for daily nation and star 550 star 5 hash for business daily today terms and conditions apply it is true we have been in business for over 20 years now empowering Kenyans to own ideal and genuine properties and yes the biggest and the best urban residential development in Kiambu a money rich the place of peace is taking shape let us show you what we have been up to the Solomonic Gate is complete. The intelligent fountain of peace is up and running. The stone perimeter wall is complete. Fully enhanced with razor wire for your security. The 100,000 liter capacity water tank is coming up. We also have the house designs and the title deeds for every plot. Invest in value. Call us today on 0790 300 300 or visit us at www.optiven.co.ke Je, maumivu ya kichwa na kukosesha amani? Kaluma Strong utuliza maumivu ya kichwa, maumivu ya mwili na hata uondoa joto jingi mwilini. Kaluma Strong ina aspirin kama kiungo. Maumivu ya kizidi, muone daktari. Rashes again. Kiss Kids Diapers. Kiss Kids. No rashes. Kiss Kids. No rashes. Bye bye rashes. Buy diapers. Choose Kiss Kids. Jenga Biashara na Family Bank. Small businesses are the heart of our economy. Going shopping? Support your local Biashara during this challenging period and experience convenient and secure checkout by paying with your Family Bank Visa card. Are you a business owner? Sign up today to accept fast, easy and secure payments through Visa. What's more, enjoy flexible financing options for your business. Call us today on 0703-095-445. Visit any of our Family Bank branches or www.visa.co.ke for more information. This is NTV. time the country will be marking a decade to the day since the promulgation of the Constitution in 2010. The Supreme Law, hailed as progressive, one that expanded the democratic space and gave Wanjiku a significant voice in all public affairs, was viewed as a panacea for decades of administrative ills, blatant abuse of human rights and autocratic rule. And so, we, the people of Kenya, penned as the opening of the Supreme Law, granted sovereign authority to citizens. 
On team coverage Wednesday, we look at how sections of the law on exercising of these democratic ideals have been implemented. First, the top stories. Tonight, Migori governor and his four children contemplate their fate. The long trip to the capital and to reckoning with graft charges. Also tonight, that all persons found to be prima facie culpable should be brought to book, notwithstanding their public office. Investigators have 21 days to close in on the COVID-19 millionaires. Plus, we the people. Stirring words. But was the vision of people power in the constitution now just an illusion? The constitution and the citizen on team coverage tonight. And the Ministry of Health, in conjunction with all bar owners, will develop self-regulating mechanisms bars are still closed curfew remains in place and all other measures against the covid 19 pandemic ntv tonight with smriti vidyarthi Thanks very much for joining us. Our sign language interpreter is Flora Atieno. On team coverage tonight, our editor of planning and research, Edmund Nyabola, live from the NTV newsroom. Our reporters, Leila Mohammed, Vincent Odwar and Ngina Kirori are with me right here in studio. That discussion coming up in a moment. But first, let's take you to our top story of the night. And Migori Governor Okoth Obado, alongside 10 other suspects, including his four children, are spending the night in police custody following their arrest early Wednesday. They are accused of misappropriation and embezzlement of more than 73 million shillings from the county coffers through an intricate web of proxies. Zainab Ismail reports on how the governor allegedly financed a luxurious life for his children at the expense of the residents of Megori. After more than five hours on the road, Governor Kotho Bado, his four children and six others arrived in Nairobi in this convoy amid heavy security. He was quickly whisked into the revolving doors of Integrity Center, perhaps for more questioning on his role in the loss of more than 73 million shillings during his first term as governor. Also in police custody are Governor Obada's four children and a section of the contractors who were part of the alleged looting scheme. Obado had on Wednesday morning surrendered to the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission detectives in Kisi County as ordered by the Director of Public Prosecutions. According to a statement by the DPP Nurdin Haji, part of the funds, a whopping 38.9 million shillings, is believed to have been channeled to the bank accounts of his three children who were studying abroad. The three, Dan O'Korth, Scarlett O'Korth and Jerry Zachary O'Korth, used the money to pay their school fees, maintenance and medical bills, while some were also traced to have bought two motor vehicles, Toyota Land Cruiser V8. The audit trail also disclosed that about 34.5 million was also used to purchase a house in the suburbs of Loresho in Nairobi and whose sole beneficial owner is Evelyn Adhiambo Zachary, one of Obado's daughters. The companies used in the conspiracy include MySoft Company Limited, TacDog Printers, Deltrack ICT Services, Celetrack Consultants, Maktebak Contractors, Joyush Business, Swifecorn Engineering, Atinus Services, Kajulu Business, Victorious Investment, Dolphus Softwares, Dunkey Press and Pesalus Services, which were registered soon after Obadu became governor, through which he pocketed millions of shillings in fictitious contracts. Also to be charged is Jared Kwaga, who is said to be Obadu's closest proxy in the siphoning of county cash. Interestingly, Kwaga also robbed in his own family, including his two brothers, his wife and mother in the scheme. 
The Migori County boss, together with his co-suspects, will be a guest of the state for tonight as they wait for their arraignment tomorrow to face the graft charges. Zainab Ismail and TV. And that is a story we'll certainly be following up for you. Meanwhile, President Uhuru Kenyatta has directed investigative agencies to expedite their probe into the procurement irregularities at the Kenya Medical Supply Authority, which led to the loss of billions of shillings and submit their findings in 21 days. In his 11th address on the COVID-19 pandemic, President Kenyatta has once again promised stern action against those found culpable regardless of their standing. And this comes as State House announced changes in the Ministry of Health before then retracting that mini shuffle. Kennedy Morevi has more. In the wake of public outrage over allegations of loss of billions of shillings in the COVID-19 funds at the Kenya Medical Supply Authority, President Uhuru Kenyatta has moved to quell the rising temperatures. Revelations of what may be the latest grand heist has set the political elite on a coalition cause, with Deputy President William Ruto and ODM party leader Raila Odinga trading accusations on culpability. President Kenyatta has now ordered investigative agencies to move with speed. Given the compelling public interest on the matter, the relevant agencies should expedite their, their ongoing investigations and conclude the same within 21 days from the date hereof. Already, the KEMSA CEO and two directors have stepped aside pending investigations and in classic style, the president is promising stand action against individuals found culpable. Notwithstanding their public office or their political and for that matter their social status. The president's directive comes at a time various other agencies, including parliament, have taken over the matter in the name of probing the questionable expenditure. The National Assembly Public Accounts Committee called on the Office of the Auditor General to institute a forensic audit and report back in 60 days. The Senate Ad Hoc Committee on COVID-19 has also called on the Office of the Auditor General to carry out a special audit, a request that is still being considered. The National Treasury Cabinet Secretary Okoriatani has also weighed in on the matter. Sometimes it's perception that, you know, all that, whatever support we got, went to the Minister of Health. What actually the Minister of Health got was only $22 billion, And they were for various interventions. For purchase of establishment of quarantine, station, uh, quarantine uh, uh, facilities, provision of face masks, there are also conditional grants to counties. We've given, at one tranche, we gave five billion to the counties to upgrade their facilities. Additionally, we also supported counties to pay all the frontline health workers. And in a dramatic twist, a communique from State House announced changes in the Ministry of Health before retracting the same. In the first release, Health PS Susan Mochache, who had been mentioned in the COVID Millionaire's expose by NTV, had been moved to the Department of Medical Services. Dr. Francis Owino had been named PS for Public Health and Ambassador Johnson Wero as PS for Industrialization. But the changes will no longer take place. Kennedy Muredi, NTV. Now, the national government and the Council of Governors will convene an inclusive national consultative conference in three weeks' time to review our national and county response to the COVID-19 pandemic. And in the meantime, the closure of bars and nightclubs is continued for a further 30 days. Uh, and that goes for the nationwide curfew as well that is currently in force. Other measures include the extension of the closure time of restaurants and eateries from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. effective 27th August. Also, in accordance with the recommendations of the Interfaith Council, the maximum number of persons permitted to attend funerals and weddings now has been reviewed upwards to 100. 
The ban on the sale of second-hand clothing, otherwise known as Mitumba, has been lifted. And the Ministry of Sports, Culture and Heritage and the Ministry of Health will jointly issue guidelines on the gradual resumption of sporting events in the country. Well, the new guidelines come on a day that the country recorded 213 new COVID-19 infections for a co cumulative caseload of 33,016. Five people have succumbed to the virus, bringing the total number of fatalities to 564. Another 241 individuals have been discharged, bringing the total number of recoveries to 19,296. President Uhuru Kenyatta has once again reiterated the need for constitutional reforms a decade after the 2010 law was promulgated. Kenyatta says the constitution is not rigid and can indeed be changed to conform to the realities of time. This comes amid a quest for reforms through the Building Bridges initiative. Ten years later, the moment to improve on it, I believe, is now. And as I said in my Madaraka Day speech, we must not, as a people, succumb to the paralysis of constitutional rigidity. We must treat a constitution as a living being, as a living document that must constantly adjust to our emerging realities. In our past, all our constitutions have been what we may call ceasefire documents, agreements created to either dodge confrontation or avoid civil conflict. And indeed, if you do a textual reading of these constitutions, they represent a constant argument between the past and the present. And that is why I call them ceasefire documents. But 10 years after one of the most progressive constitutions, I believe the moment calls on us to do better. Instead of a ceasefire document that enforces a zero-sum game in which winner takes all and loser is expected to accept, the moment calls us to a new, a new time. The moment calls us to create a constitutional order that will long endure and survive and not be a conflict-stopping constitution, but rather a future-building document. And on this, I want to emphasize to all of us that we must not go down a path of populism today, but let us choose a bold path a path that will assure each and every Kenyan, regardless of where they come from, their social background, their ethnic background, their religious background, assure every Kenyan of sustained peace, security, and shared economic responsibility. And from that, it is now time for our team coverage on We the People, looking at the law and the Kenyan citizen. First out out of our team is our planning and research editor, Edmund Nyabola. Now, Edmund, the Constitution places supreme authority on the people of Kenya. 
Yes, Smriti, coming from a period in which the voice of the common man was largely insignificant, decades and decades of that, the 2010 constitution expanded the democratic space and allowed the ordinary Kenyan a voice in all public policy affairs. But getting there was never a walk in the park. For close to five decades, the country was governed under the independence constitution, granting the presidency imperial powers. Dissenting voices were muzzled and the common man left with very little say. It took years of struggle for reforms championed by the civil society and the opposition for Anjiku's voice to matter. The people would be asked, what do you want in the constitution? How do you want your country reborn, reimagined? Uh, and now there was, of course, the process of uh, getting views. And I think it was uh, quite... Uh, a good process in terms of the committee, the Yashpol Guy Committee, going, you know, to many places in our country, getting views from Kenyans. And so, in the wake of what remains the darkest period in the country's history, it was time for a new supreme law. It fell upon the Committee of Experts on Constitutional Review to collate the views of the people on the direction they wanted the country to take. Kenyans really wanted the reforms. I mean, for me, the, the greatest, greatest example and one of the most affirming, this would not have been possible. In fact, I think the only reason the committee survived and the only reason we have the constitution is because Kenyans wanted reforms. So this acted as a check on the politicians. One of the most uh, enduring concerns as at the time we, we were getting to bombers was whether we would be able to deliver a constitutional order that would, uh, you know, that would carry the state in a stable way that would enable prosperity and uh, independence and freedoms of people of, a, of another generation. We, the people of Kenya, so begins the 2010 constitution placing all sovereign power on the people as captured in Chapter 1. Clause 2 says the people may exercise this authority either directly or through democratically elected leaders. People tend to look at the article, I think it's either 2 or 3, which says that sovereignty you know, uh, remains to the people and so forth. But you have to go right inside and see the centrality and the supremacy of the people in that constitution. The fact that judicial authority is derived from the, from the people, the executive derives authority from the people, parliament does. The power in Kenya belongs to the people. Those who exercise it, like the CJ, are delegates. And a delegate, you, you have got to bear in mind the, 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 the interests of the principal. So it is the people, the power belongs to the people. And that's why I'm saying, if we all enforce the law the way it is required, we will have everybody accounting for his, uh, his, his acts, and we will enjoy. So that is how it was achieved, and one of the ways it was entrenched in the law, the Supreme Law, the 2010 Constitution, that is, is through public interest in litigation, which Leila Mohammed has been looking into. Leila. Well, Edmund, before Article 22 of the Constitution allowed for any Kenyan citizen to challenge questionable public policy in the courts of law, Kenyans who are very aware of the illegal rights were struggling about it in the streets. And this, once the new Constitution came into place, there was a, a stark departure from there and civil rights activists. Okiom Tata has become a household for advocating for the good of the public and here is one of those stories. It was in November 1989 when the late Professor Wangari Madhai, a civil rights activist and environmentalist, made an application to the court seeking a temporary injunction on construction within Uhuru Park, a public property. Professor Madhai's petition was kicked out for lack of locus standi, which is the right to bring an action in a court but it formed the basis upon which public interest litigation would be embedded in the law. You need to show that you are personally affected and you've been personally injured to bring a case. So before 2010, before the new constitution and the change of this 
procedural rules, local stand standard was used to knock off very many uh, cases. So those are among, among the things that were removed in the new constitution. And so it became now possible to ventilate grievances concerning public law through the courts and not uh, necessarily through the spirit, although the spirit remains the ultimate point of engagement for any dispute concerning public law. Article 22 for the Constitution supports and encourages the filing of public interest cases. The law also demands public participation in public policy affairs. And that man who killed the, the young man whom I saw... Civil rights activist Okia Omtata has been on the forefront in championing public interest litigation. At that time, the, the rights that we enjoy under the Bill of Rights were there but not articulated in the manner that are articulated in the current constitution because as we say rights are not given by the state. Before August 2010 many a Kenyan would express their dissatisfaction with government on the streets but with the coming in of the new constitution many have been emboldened to put centers of power to account to be fair, transparent and to act within the remit of the law using public interest litigation. The law allows a third party to intervene and demand action where there is a threat or a violation of the same law. So under the statute... And it is a duty which Omtata has relentlessly pursued over the last decade. There was this play, a small play which was written by the... He's now a senator Malala. of Kakamega Malala and then uh, Butera girls were staging it and then the big state... The state tried to stop the girls from going ahead and presenting the play. So I challenged the decision of the state we went before Justice Majanja and I think one of the, he wrote a very beautiful decision on the principle of freedom of expression, which has been used in very, very many other cases. But the job is far from finished, they argue. The, the, the courts have to balance between not becoming a new parliament. It's not their job to make laws. If they find gaps, it's not their job to, to fill the gaps, but to point them out. On the other hand, they cannot be so strict and restrictive. They say, no, here our hands are tied. They've been given power by the people of Kenya, or of Kenya to uh, interpret and apply the constitution so that it can help uh, to deal with all cases of injustice. Now, this was also captured in Chapter 4 of the Constitution on the Bill of Rights. Now, Vincent Tudor, you have been very uh, controversial in the office with always telling everyone that you know your rights. What have you found out about the whole issue of the Bill of Rights as according to Chapter 4 of the current Constitution? Leila, the Bill of Rights was among the key progressive ideals captured in the 2010 Constitution, coming on the back of blatant disregard for human rights for decades. The aim was to respect and uphold human dignity and freedoms. A decade later, and the jury is still out on the success rate of implementation. Okay. It was among the key additions to the Constitution, outlining an array of rights and fundamental freedoms to be enjoyed by a people who until then had known no such liberties. Chapter 4 on the Bill of Rights expanding these civil liberties and fundamental freedoms of expression, picketing and association, and the right to life, health care, and food, among many more. Many are the times these rights have been abused. People have uh, gone to court, they've litigated on rights. I mean, uh, prisoners for the first time were enabled to vote in presidential elections and in referenda. Children have also enjoyed uh, significant uh, rights, uh, protection and, uh, um, uh, I mean, uh, uh, advancement of the right to education, health care. The new dispensation established the Kenya National Commission on Human Rights and Independent Policing Oversight Authority among a number of independent commissions to safeguard these rights. But a decade later, the independence of such commissions to legally carry out their mandate to protect the rights of citizens has weakened. Perhaps the most recent manifestation of this was the brutal handling of civilians by police in enforcement of the COVID-19 curfew order. And the constitution is as good as its implementation. If a constitution has a bill of rights, 
and there's no mechanism of enforcing those bill of uh, the, 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 the bill of rights. It is a whole constitution. The appointments to the commissions seem to be undermining the independence of the commissions. Judiciary is not adequately funded. The judiciary fund has never been operationalized. But despite the provisions of the Bill of Rights in the Constitution, extrajudicial killings, discrimination and disregard of human dignity are still common in the country. If we do not implement socio-economic rights in this country effectively, then it's going to be extremely difficult for this country to realize uh, the sustainable development goals. Human rights activists maintain there is still a long way to go for the realization of some of the civil liberties that are guaranteed in the constitution. All right, Vincent Odwar's story takes us to a short break on team coverage. But do stay with us. We still have Ngina Kirori coming up looking at the right to food as well as your say on the constitution a decade on. Stay with us on NTV. It is true. We have been in business for over 20 years now, empowering Kenyans to own ideal and genuine properties. And yes, the biggest and the best urban residential development in Kiambu, a money rich the place of peace, is taking shape. Let us show you what we have been up to. The Solomonic Gate is complete. The intelligent fountain of peace is up and running. The stone perimeter wall is complete, fully enhanced with razor wire for your security. The 100,000 litre capacity water tank is coming up. We also have the house designs and the title deeds for every plot. Invest in value. Call us today on 0790-300-300 or visit us at www.optiven.co.ke Happy anniversary! Bana hii mabate kina bed na mamu, badu ina kampia. Na hii nyumbi mekuwafa for so many years. Na piu melele wapa. Wow! Imagine hata likuwa sija notice. Rufus! Wewe ni fundi wangu wa meka mingi sana. Hai mabati ya tadumu kwedi? Huyu kijana nili muambia anunue mabati ya dumu zas. Usbahatishe mabati. Hakikisha umeangalia alama za kuthibitisha dumu zas halisi. Chagua dumu zas. Mabati inayo dumu kudumu. Istoshe dumu zas nyo mabati peke inayo kuja na warranty. Sitaki tena kubatisha. Mabati inayo dumu kudumu. In our daily fast-paced life, Pain always slows us down, and to fight pain effectively and quick, act fast with Parafast tablets. Parafast contains paracetamol, which relieves pain and fever. Put a tablet of Parafast in a half-full glass of water, let it dissolve and drink the solution. Parafast has a pleasant orange flavor. Parafast gives you quick relief from headache, fever, menstrual pain, muscle pains, and backaches. Act fast with Parafast tablets. Available in all leading chemists. If symptoms persist, seek medical advice. <laughs> well, this is awkward. If only he had amazing data. Come on, man! Come on, man! Never miss out on great moments. Enjoy 3GB plus free WhatsApp for 99 Bob daily or 300 MB plus free WhatsApp for 20 Bob daily. Dial star 544 hash. Come on, man. Airtel, the smartphone network. Nick, what are you wearing? What is this? What's uh -huh. going on? These are my favorite pajamas because okay. we are out here at the Sunday pajama brunch courtesy of Eat Out. I'm about to eat a lot. And mm -hmm. Chef Mulunda, who happens to be one of the finest chefs in Kenya, he's going to be in the house cooking. We did it. Get in. Creating next level concert experiences, Nairobi R&B events have brought international artists like Masego and Tawar to East Africa to share stages and studios with Kenya's key industry players. We 
we admit both self and government sponsored students for our degree, diploma and certificate programs that are accredited by the Commission for University Education. Do not be left behind. For details on our online learning programs, log on to www.ctech.ac.ke and apply today for the September intake. ZTEC University. Invent your future. Welcome back to our team coverage on We the People on the Constitution and the Common Man. Next up is Ngina Kirori looking at the right to food as captured in the Supreme Law. Ngina? Well, Simriti, among the requirements in the Bill of Rights is the provision of safe and secure food for all. But a decade later, since the Constitution was promulgated, and with billions of or shillings pumped into food production, the country still remains food insecure. Article 43, Section 1C of the Constitution states that every person has the right to be free from hunger and to adequate food of an acceptable quality. But in a country with huge parallels in standards of living, achieving this constitutional requirement remains a distant dream a decade on. About 80% of households are actually food insecure in urban poor settings and about half of children who are aged less than five years are actually stunted. They are too short for their age. So in terms of ad adequacy, that, that food is not adequate, it's not enough because people are hungry. The Food Security Bill of 2017 dictates that for the enjoyment of the right of adequate food and freedom from hunger, the national and county governments shall respect, protect and fulfill the human right to food and guarantee mechanisms for its enforcement, as well as ensure the availability, accessibility, adaptability and acceptability of food for all. The Global Hunger Index report in 2018 indicated that about one in three Kenyans are actually severely food, I mean, severely hungry. Then there is a question of food hygiene and safety, especially in urban settings. People are eating food that is not safe. F food is being prepared in very unsafe uh, environment because of issues of water and sanitation. They, they, they use unclean water to, to prepare their food. And the environment where the food is being prepared is very unhygienic. Climate change has affected food production world over. Researchers have been employing adaptive ways of producing food. African Population and Health Research Center's vertical farming approach is part of the Route to Food initiative. Very few people are able to, 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 to eat healthy. Many people have told us we, we can only depend on, we can only eat to fill our stomach. So they eat like ugali with, uh, with nothing else. To, just to fill their stomach. But with such mega projects such as the Galana Kulalu irrigation scheme failing to produce the expected yield, the threat of food insecurity remains alive. The water and the nutrients come through and that's how you see them. And that is the status of food security in the country. Back to you, Samiti. All right, Ngina, thanks very much. Well, on team coverage, we also sampled some of your views on the impact of the Constitution in expanding democratic ideals and entrenching the rule of law in the country. Here's your say. Sai tuna yasavikia viongozi wetu alaka tukianza na MCA, tukienda ya MP, governors, senators, tukona viongozi. Kwa hivyo mambo ya katipa hili tusaindia hapo mwanaiji. 2010 constitution is still very weak in terms of holding the executive to account. The 2010 constitution has expanded the freedom, democratic freedom of Kenyans in this country. Because anybody today, including a woman, can say anything. There's a lot of hardship here, down, down here. The only thing that has changed is the formation of the Senate and the county assemblies, of which it's not helpful to the common one, aren't you, surely? Say freedom,
And your views wrap up team coverage this Wednesday. Of course, more coming your way next week. It is half past the hour. We take a commercial break on NTV tonight. The business news with Julian Zamboko is coming up next. Sona moja imetengenezwa kwa njia speciali ili kupambana na maumivu kwa haraka. Sona moja ina aspirin kama kiungo. Sona moja, kitulizo kamili. Maumivu ya kizidi, pata ushauri wa daktari. For a better tomorrow, don't forget to do the 1, 2, 3 with Colgate every night. Madam, would you like to join us on this mission? Yes, but how? Just one question for you. How do you keep your toilet clean? I use regular detergent and bleach for washing and removing yellow stains. I've been using it for years. Oh, madam, the regular detergents and bleach are used for washing clothes. To disinfect your toilet properly, you need Hapik 10X. It is specially made for germs and stains removal. Hapik's thick formula settles on stains and gives 10 times better cleaning compared to regular detergents and bleach. Wow, now I'm convinced, Helen Paul. Really? Yeah. Now that she's part of the mission, the next house is yours. We have uh, an obligation to make sure that there is safety of the students when we are looking for a bus. That is why we are using the height and cell steel from Doshi. Jijenge na Doshi Steel. Chuma Yanguvu. It is time to get down to business. Welcome, I am Julian Amboko. Earnings in the horticulture sector stood at 81 billion shillings in the first half of 2020, up from 76 billion shillings in the same period in 2019, as the sector rebounded from the adverse effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. This was revealed by President Uhuru Kenyatta in the 11th COVID-19 presidential address, which also indicated that the economy, that the economy rather, is punching above initial expectations, with growth standing at 4.6% compared to the best case, best case full year scenario of 2.3%. The president also said that the tax cuts undertaken in March have helped boost citizens' purchasing power. Those tax cuts have put a total of 47.8 billion shillings in the pockets of Kenyans. This added to the additional 14 billion shillings of VAT refunds that I directed in the same month of March. And on to the dairy sector, Kenya could be forced to import milk to plug supply gap occasioned by a sharp fall in production since the beginning of 2020. Agriculture Cabinet Secretary Peter Munya says the amount of formerly marketed milk, which was reduced from 63.4 million litres in January to 40.2 million litres in June. Munya challenged local dairy farmers to, step, to set up rather, local production in order to satisfy the available local market as the country's economy continues to recover from the impact of the coronavirus pandemic. We want to assure the stakeholders in this critical sector that we will continue to ensure that compliance with the law as regards the illegal importation of milk will be strictly enforced. These interventions have drastically reduced, uh, reduced uh, imports to approximately 4.5 million liters of white milk per month. And moving on to the capital markets, Kiprono Kitoni has officially taken over as the chairperson of the board of the Nairobi Securities Exchange, promising to revive new listings on the bows. Kiprono, who has taken over from former chairman Samuel Kimani, is banking on divestiture of government from key establishments to, to revitalize the exchange from the drought of new listings. Samuel Kimani resigned on July 13, 2020, after serving as the chairman of the NSC board since 2012. Kitoni has been serving as a non-executive board member of the exchange 
since 2018. I'm happy to note that together with the support of the board and other stakeholders, we were able to develop and launch key products such as the Real uh, Estate Investment Trust, Exchange Traded Funds, and the Derivatives Market. We will aggressively seek to increase our listed companies across all our asset classes in an effort to deepen Kenya's capital markets. Deep and liquid capital markets are not only essential ingredients, but instrumental in supporting economic growth creating domestic inv investment opportunities, as well as attracting foreign and local capital. And from public transactions, let's move to the private transactions. Three weeks after the intended joint venture between Telcom Kenya and Airtel Kenya collapsed, Telcom Kenya has restructured its business model. The telecommunications company now seeks to leverage on growing digital penetration to drive business as the prospects for a consolidation of parts of its business with those of the number two player in the market have faded. The previous three verticals of Telcom Mobile, Enterprise and Carrier businesses will now be restructured into consumer and digital to be led by Steve Okeo and Chris Sinanu, respectively. Telcom Kenya and Airtel had been working towards a joint venture for a period of 18 months. We do not require additional spectrum in order to deliver the strategy that I've spoken about today. Largely, um, uh, expansion of our 4G network, um, enhancing our 4G network, for which we have sufficient spectrum, at least for the time being, is what, we, is, is what we need to do. There is a variety of ways where we're able to raise funding to be able to undertake, um, to, 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 to deploy the strategy that we have. And that takes us to the close of business. Enjoy the rest of your viewing. When you buy a bar of Cadbury Dairy Milk Chocolate, you can help change the story. That's because we will use part of the proceeds to donate milk to less fortunate children across our beautiful country. Let us come together and show the generous spirit that is inside of all of us. Cadbury Dairy Milk. There's a glass and a half in everyone. Sio watu wengi wanajua maneno ya chuma. Lazima akutafute ule fundi au ana deal na chuma ya ndoshi. Nikishika nasikia uzito, unasikia tumuongeza mshahara. Jijenge na Doshi Steel, chuma ya nguvu. Bito, bito, bito. Let me see you make your move. Do it all, do it all, do it all. But I'm the days I compromise it all. Either my skin is sensitive or my back against the wall. You can have it all. What? Always brings it all. Okay. Get tall with new always twin one. Feather like softness overall, even on the wind scale. And rapid dry channels. Let me see you make a move. Always. We are the generation of change. It is true. We have been in business for over 20 years now, empowering Kenyans to own ideal and genuine properties. And yes, the biggest and the best urban residential development in Kiambu, a money rich, the place of peace, is taking shape. Let us show you what we have been up to. The Solomonic Gate is complete. The intelligent fountain of peace is up and running. The stone perimeter wall is complete fully enhanced with razor wire for your security. The 100,000 liter capacity water tank is coming up. We also have the house designs and the title deeds for every plot. Invest in value. Call us today on 0790 300 300 or visit us at www.optiven.co.ke. I thought a lot about you. This is not acceptable! Come on, man! Never miss out on great moments. Enjoy 3GB plus free WhatsApp for 99 Bob daily. Or 300 MB plus free WhatsApp for 20 Bob daily. Dial star 544 hash. Come on, man! Airtel, the smartphone network.
Welcome back to the broadcast. Doctors in Nairobi have called off a planned strike after lengthy consultations with the county's leadership. They have, however, warned that if the agreement is not implemented, then they will go back to the streets. Although health services is one of the functions that Nairobi City County government transferred to national government, and which is now under the Nairobi Metropolitan Services, the staff remain the employees of Nairobi City County government. Constitutional responsibility for the transferred functions remain with the county government. We are used to signing documents and not implementing them. Let it be known that once we call off this strike, it does not stop us from calling another strike. We are ready. We have to be respected as doctors. More importantly, there are issues that we have written here that must be done. The issue of payment of salaries. Salaries must be paid by the 5th of every month. Failure to which on 6th we are not working. Elsewhere, the court has allowed Nairobi Governor Mike Sonko and other suspects in the 357 million shilling corruption case to consider plea bargaining. Sonko is facing economic crimes, abuse of office, unlawful acquisition of property and irregular payments that saw the county lose 357 million shillings. He's out on a cash bail of 15 million shillings. Chief Magistrate Douglas Ogotti said the suspects could consider a plea bargain with the DPP before the case proceeds to full trial. And even though the prosecution says it has not put any offer on the table, plea bargain is an agreement between an accused and the DPP where they agree to plead guilty to a charge in exchange for a lesser sentence or in corruption cases return all lost money to the state. The case will be mentioned on the 25th of September 2020. So that you, you address the relief for which you went to the High Court. All right, it is now time for the sports news. Watson Karuma has that lined up for us after this quick break. Heaviness in a burning inside, it could be heartburn. Indigestion and heartburn? Eno gets to work in six seconds and works on the six symptoms of heartburn so you can keep living life non-stop. Eno, fight heartburn and indigestion fast. from Morfix. Let's see what they're developing right now. Morfix pants with anatomic fit technology. New Morfix pants, an invention for babies for babies. You should also try Morfix. Novo Flowers are fortified with vitamins and minerals to provide wholesome goodness for the whole family. Dovu all-purpose flour makes the most delicious chapatis, mandazis and all other pastries. Dovu is readily available at your nearest shop. Dovu Tosha. You have worked so hard. Now your project is nearing completion. You now need to crown your labor. For over 50 years, East African Cables has been a premier manufacturer of high-quality electrical cables, manufactured to international standards for the region, giving you the reliability and safety you deserve. We manufacture an extensive range of power cables for applications in domestic and industrial wiring. Our work speaks for itself. Get in touch. Let's talk cables. Kumbuka Wire Sea Wire. East African Cables. Connecting Lives. Here we are, living in the moment And here we are, dreaming in the open Now look around, isn't this a new day? Make a move 
doing things in your way, a new way. Cause this is our world, and this is our time. These are our plans, we're gonna let them shine. This is our place in the human race, and we won't stop dreaming. No, we won't stop dreaming. The future of our nation relies on your dreams and our steel. Tominoka Group, at the core of every construction. From far with you, mm. huh? I even gifted you a magnificent house. Huh? Hmm. Rosa, it's the thought that counts. <laughs> Please help me. When it comes to fever, you need to be both. Panadol Baby and Infant starts to work on fever in 15 minutes and is gentle on the tummy. Panadol Baby and Infant, tough on fever, gentle on your child. How to improve toddler behavior. Show your love. Make sure your displays of affection for your child outnumber any consequences or punishment. Prioritize rules. Rather than overloading your child with rules from the onset, prioritize those geared towards safety first. Kiss kids diapers. Kiss kids. No rashes. Kiss kids. No rashes. Bye bye rashes. Bye diapers. Choose kiss kids. Nick, what are you wearing? What is this? What's uh -huh. going on? These are my favorite pajamas because okay. we are out here at the Sunday pajama brunch courtesy of Eat Out. I'm about to eat a lot. And mm -hmm. Chef Mulunda, who happens to be one of the finest chefs in Kenya, he's going to be in the house cooking. We did it. Get in. Creating next level concert experiences, Nairobi R&B events have brought international artists like Masego and Tawar to East Africa to share stages and studios with Kenya's key industry players. We admit both self and government sponsored students for our degree, diploma and certificate programs that are accredited by the Commission for University Education. Do not be left behind. For details on our online learning programs, log on to www.ztech.ac.ke and apply today for the September intake. ZTech University. Invent your future. Welcome to NTV Sport, I'm Watson Karuma. Now, Football Kenya Federation's Electoral Board has concluded the exercise of receiving nomination forms from aspirants seeking elective positions at the county level. The board has already received forms from aspirants from Mombasa, West Pokot, Nairobi East, Taita Taveta, and Transzoia counties. Aspirants seeking elective positions at the national level will submit their papers on the 31st of this month. The board will publish the final list of delegates eligible to vote at both the county and national levels later today. County elections are set to be held on 19th of next month, while the national elections will be held on the 17th of October. <laughs> Na so far tumepokelewa vizuri. Zimechukuliwa zile ni sheria lazima zichukuliwe, iangaliwe kila kitu tumelipa everything. Mimi naona itakuwa free and fair. Tokia mpaka hapa naona mambo yanaenda vizuri, tunashirikiwa vizuri na mipangilio inaenda vizuri. So na hope mambo itakuwa ni sawa. Now, long-serving Gormahia chairman Ambrose Rachir has outlined plans for league champions even as he starts a new four-year term. Rachir, who has served the club for the past 11 years, has renewed his promise to build a stadium on Kogalo's 15-acre piece of land in Kasarani, as well as uh, new apartments for the players. We are, as an office, determined to have a stadium belonging to Gor Mahia Football Club, where not only will we be doing our training, but also playing our home matches. Needless to say that it will be available also for hire by other clubs. 
given the dearth or the scarcity of playing ground or stadia in our country. Now, Barcelona fans gathered outside the new camp to protest against the board and to support the club's record goal scorer, Lionel Messi, who wants to leave the club after nearly two decades with the Spanish Giants. Barcelona has confirmed that the Argentine international sent a document expressing his desire to activate a release clause that will end his contract, which currently runs until next June, and allow him to leave for free this summer. The six-time Ballon d'Or Winner made his debut for Barca in 2004 and has won the Champions League four times. Barcelona, though, believe the clause has now expired and Messi is contracted to the club until 2021 with a 700 million euro buyout clause. This comes after Barca were beaten 8-2 by Bayern Munich in the Champions League quarterfinals on the 16th of this month. Now, from one Barcelona legend to another, and that is a former uh, football star, Ronaldinho, arrived home in Brazil on a private jet on Tuesday, following more than five months in detention in Paraguay over a fake passport scandal. The former Bar Ballon d'Or winner arrived at Rio de Janeiro's international airport from Paraguay just before 4.30 p.m. A judge on Monday released Ronaldinho and his brother, who had both been held for a month in jail and another four months under house arrest in a hotel in Asuncion. The former World Cup winner is now free to travel to whatever country in the world he wants, but he must inform uh, them if he changes his permanent residence for a period of one year, the judge said. Now, Paul George says his struggles are over as he scored a team high of 35 points on Tuesday to lead the LA Clippers to a dominating 154 to 111 playoff victory over the Dallas Mavericks. George rebounded from three subpar performances to combine defensively with Kawhi Leonard and give the Clippers a 3 2 series lead. George opened up after the game about his struggles with coping inside the NBA's quarantine bubble in Orlando, Florida, where the players have to adhere to strict health and safety measures and no spectators are allowed into the arena. Also, Jamal Murray scored 42 points and Nikola Jokic had 31 as the Denver Nuggets avoided elimination with a 117 to 107 victory over the Utah Jazz in game five of their playoff series. Guys getting you to the lane, giving you a little bit of extra room and Cleaver that time doing a good job. George gets a friendly. Well, that does it for NTV Sport. Thank you very much for your time. Have a lovely night. Sports with Watson Karuma closes NTV tonight. Flora Artiano has joined us in sign language interpretation. And our coverage of the Constitution's promulgation at 10 years continues tomorrow. In a big way, make sure that you tune in at 7 p.m. and 9 p.m. for extensive coverage of We the People a decade on. I'm Smriti Vidyarthi. Have yourselves a good night. In fact, tomorrow start watching from as early as 6 a.m. We'll be covering it throughout the day. Bye-bye.